Hi, and welcome to Mike's Garage. So in this episode, we're going to unbox a new EG4 12,000 XP that just came in from Signature Solar. So we're going to completely unbox it, look at all the contents. I'm going to go over a lot of the features that are in it and why I keep buying them. Okay, so let's get this all opened up. So the first thing you're going to do is cut away the tape that is securing it. Open up the box. So on the inside, one of the things that you're going to notice right away is going to be this piece of cardboard. Now, this is actually your template that you're going to mount on the wall exactly where you want the unit to go. So I have a separate video that I'm going to be posting, which shows you the whole process. So stay tuned for that one. Um, but here's the template. Want to keep this until it's mounted. These holes line up specifically with the bracket, how that it's mounted on the uh, 12,000 XP. So very important. You're going to want to hold on to this. Now the bracket, this is what actually mounts to your wall. So this is going to be up on the wall. Once again, have a separate video on that. You're going to mount that up and you're going to bolt it on. Now it does come with different hardware for this. So if it's in a wall that has, that's made of concrete, um, so concrete wall, block wall, what have you, it comes with some nice anchor bolts. You're going to want to use those, uh, similar to what you would use to secure a lift into the ground. Um, but they give you a total of six of them, so definitely use them. If you are mounting this into uh, a wood stud, it does come with six wood screws. Now, when I mount mine, and this is just personal preference, I use all six, but then I also add two more in of my own. I just feel better having things more secure. So on my wall, you may be able to see it, uh, but it's my one of my existing ones is mounted to a uh, two by 10, which is then secured at three locations to the frame of my shop. But you're going to use these uh, uh, wood screws, so um, and then also there are these smaller screws in here. These are going to be for the bottom brackets. So you can see that. That's going to go in there and then that's going to go into the 12,000 XP. Once again, separate video on that. So it does come with all the hardware. I just like to overdo things, um, overbuild things, secure things, you know, better than, uh, than what manufacturers recommend. And the reason why I do that is kind of on purpose. Uh, you're mounting this to a wall. It is, you know, a uh, hundred pounds. You don't want to have some sort of an event where someone bumps into it and it, and it falls on someone. So, uh, you can never go wrong with over securing things. So once again, you got your bracket. That's your top one. That's what all the weight goes on. Your bottom brackets. Your different hardware. I would move this off to the side. So this is actually your uh, Wi-Fi dongle on the inside. And you're going to want to keep it somewhere nice and safe because as you're moving this around, remember, it's 100 pounds. You don't want to accidentally uh, squish one of these. So just take this, put it back in, and put it on the table. The styrofoam on these is quite thick. So it's about three inches at its thickest part, and then here is about an inch. It does a great job of protecting the 12,000 XP in shipment. I am very happy that they do that because I've ordered five of these now, and they've all come uh, with no issues whatsoever. So that that is awesome. A lot of times when you order things, they're not, oh, how can I put it, uh, not packaged well, and you get broken items, and... Uh, Thankfully, you don't have that issue with these. And when you open this up, you're going to have two cables on the inside. Uh, one is going to be connected to your batteries for closed loop operation, so that's your SOC uh, that it's going to measure. And then you also have another one, which is going to be your parallel cable. I believe this one is 
the parallel cable and that's when you're going to connect multiple inverters together which I am doing so good cables to have now we'll actually um, lift this up and we'll go over a lot of the features that are in here all right so let's go over the front first uh, you're going to have your display here and all the buttons to be able to go into your configuration. So what I find is there's more settings available using the configuration on the panel than on the Wi-Fi app. For example, you can uh, set up your batteries, how many amp hours of batteries are connected, what type of battery. So is it lithium iron phosphate? Um, is it uh, going to be your... Um, your, your lead acid type batteries, what type of battery is being connected to it. You also can adjust your uh, fan speeds, which I do on mine. I'll do a separate video on why I do that, but it's something you might be interested in. So I like this. I like the Wi-Fi connectivity. There's also an online app that has a good amount of configurations that you can do in it. Um, but personally for me, my favorite is actually using what's on the front. You have your, um, your battery breakers right here. It's 300 amp. That will uh, connect or disconnect your battery. So it's your uh, uh, battery disconnect switches. You have your smart load. Uh, typically, I don't use it, but it's kind of neat to have that ability. And then you have your regular load on and off. On the side here, you have your intake for your fans, and behind here is an air filter that you're going to want to clean from time to time. What this is going to do is try to keep all of the dust out of uh, your, your 12,000 XP. So it's very important to, uh, to clean these. You can see the little filter on the inside. What I would recommend doing is getting a air purifier wherever that you have your either 6,000 XP's or 12,000 XP's because they are open um, to where uh, you want to try to minimize the amount of dust that's in the room with these, which will greatly extend their life. Now, these are made to be mounted indoors. Do not mount these outdoors or in a high humidity area because they are open to the atmosphere. So it's not like this is a sealed unit like a lot of the hybrids. It is open, so you have to uh, you have to really take care of these, so they're going to last a long time. And they do come with a five-year warranty, uh, which is good. But like the hybrids that are fully sealed are ten-year. I think these can last just as long as a hybrid, personally. But the important thing is you got to make sure that you're not going to get a lot of dust in here, and you're going to keep the ambient temperature and humidity within normal ranges. Down here is where uh, your dongle plugs in. So you're going to plug that in. That's going to give you your, uh, your Wi-Fi. And then you have your EPS off and on. Okay, Your EPS off and on is what you're going to um, flip when you're going to energize um, the output of this, which then goes into your service panel. All right. On the back, this mount here is what secures... Um, on the back, this bracket here is what connects to the wall mount and holds this up in the air. This is what is load bearing. So you have this mounted on the wall. And when you lower this down, it's then going to put all the weight onto this bracket. These smaller brackets are just as kind of secure uh, it to the wall to keep the whole thing from moving, but all the weight is on this bracket. So once again, make sure it's secure really well. Uh, don't connect it to drywall unless it's the uh, screw is going through drywall and hitting a stud. You want to make sure that the full weight of this is on studs or on concrete or on something that's very solid because this does weigh 100 pounds. Okay, on the side, you've got your four fans. And once again, you can adjust these um, on the front display 
and also on the online app. Um, I tend to customize mine. Once again, separate video, uh, just because if you leave it in its standard setting, um, the fans are pretty much silent and there's really no air volume moving past them uh, until it reaches a certain temperature. Then they spin up. Uh, they can create some noise and um, it will cool itself down and it'll go silent again, which is fine. Um, what I tend to do is I customize mine to where I have them always going um, at a, a, it moves some air, but it's not super loud. But it, I, I think that it keeps the temperature things a little more stable. Um, and in that way, while it's charging during the daytime, it doesn't spin up the fans as often. Um, but that's just personal preference. So once again, your four fans are there. You have your spec sheet uh, on the side. So this will put out 12,000 watts continuous. Uh, I believe it is 18,000 watts peak. So I believe it's around 50 to 53 amps it will put out. We'll just call it 50 for argument's sake. So 50 amps continuous, 75 amps peak. So if you have a service panel and you know that you're going to need to draw, say, 100 amps, then you're probably going to want to have two of these. Okay. Uh, other things that you uh, should, should know. You have down here your solar disconnect. So a um, lot, of, lot of things are built into this. So you have your battery disconnects. You have your solar disconnects. Um, a lot of uh, cool safety features are kind of built into it. And it's also, you know, saves you some money because you don't have to get additional battery disconnects because, well, you already have one. Same with your solar right there. And then you have your power on and off. Um, whenever that you're installing this, something that's important to know with all inverters when you're connecting it to lithium iron phosphate batteries, some of the nicer batteries are going to uh, have a built-in resistor to where it will kind of charge up the capacitors that are in this um, before, uh, uh, before it gives a full rush of current. Um, you want to make sure that either your batteries have a pre-charge resistor in there or you're doing it manually because otherwise, if you just connect this up to your uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries, you can damage the capacitors that are inside on this. And it doesn't matter if it's an EG4 or any other brand, they're, they're kind of all like that because the lithium iron phosphate batteries have a very low internal resistance. So because of that, uh, you connect it up to something, it's going to send a rush of current. So you got to make sure that you're protecting these every time that uh, you reconnect batteries to them. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about why I've purchased so many of these. So I've got a total of five uh, 12,000 XPs. I have two of them from my shop, and I have three of them from my house, and this is one of the ones that's going to be from my house. The reason why I purchased them, number one, they're relatively inexpensive. Number two, they are UL listed. And number three, you can parallel them to get the exact amount of power that you need for your requirements. So in my shop, I typically pull... Um, up to 50 amps on a regular basis. And I did max out a single one of these inverters and had it shut down. Uh, what I'm doing now is I have a second one that's mounted on the wall and that will be able to handle the extra load of the shop. But what it also does is it gives me a little bit of redundancy because if I have one that fails, I still have the other one without having to reconnect a grid. For my house, I have three of these that are being installed. So when you look at it, they'll each put out 50 amps continuous, 75 amps peak. Well, I have a 200 amp service to my house and everything is electric. So you have your heat pump, you have your electric stove, your electric dryer, electric hot water tank, you know, water heater. So that draws a lot of power. You even have a well pump. So um, with having three of them in parallel, that will give me... Uh, 150 amps continuous and 225 peak. Uh, it's more than what I would ever use, 
But once again, if I run into an issue that one of them fails, then at that point, I can still run most loads in a house without having to move back to grid power. And since I'm using the same ones as uh, in the shop as in, in the house, that if I needed to send one of these in for service and I still wanted to have three running for the house, I could always take one from the shop, move it over here, and then poof, I'm back up to full power. So I wanted to make sure I had the same components for both the shop and for the house. That way I can easily, you know, kind of um, uh, use them wherever that they're needed. Uh, so that was just kind of my thought process. So I do have five of these now and uh, looking forward to having them all hooked up. Once again, um, I do tend to purchase my, uh, my inverters from Signature Solar. I have gotten a good deal. As of the recording of this, they're still $24.99, which to me, that's a steal compared to everything else. And these do have uh, split phase 240 uh, volt outputs. So um, it's not like you have to um, get some sort of a, a combiner box to, to take two 120 inverters and make 240 out of them. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of neat that it's 240 right out of the box. And you can easily parallel these just like the 6000 XPs and get whatever power level that you need. So that's pretty much it. Thank you again for watching Mike's Garage. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment. And with a lot of my videos, I may get a small commission if you do purchase, um, but it does help me with the channel. So that's it. Once again, thanks again for watching Mike's Garage.